Y'all, I'm here in the kitchen just doing what I do. And I just stopped to think of how much, you know, when you have a family, you have to just make sure they're okay. Even though you have to find that balance and make sure that you're okay also. I'm still learning to do that. I'm doing it more. And just this process of preparing this pineapple here just makes me step back and think how, you know, how much we put into preparing for others and making sure that they're okay. Just the sheer desire to make sure that people are okay. I'm here literally dehydrating some pineapples. And this I'm doing because, one, I'd rather do healthier snacks for my family to enjoy and have it prepared so that when we're ready to grab something, it's right there readily available. And that way we can make better, healthier choices. And believe it or not, if this is constant. Like there's no, I don't think anybody could ever prep enough. Look at this, guys. Let me just rinse my hand off and show you real quick. I am done canning my, well, I thought I was done canning my, my pineapples for the season, but obviously I had to go get more because I did can some and I did dehydrate some, but now I'm doing some more and I'm going to have to like really put it away from regular circulation. Look at this. This jar of pineapples was open yesterday. Okay. And I can with just water and a little lemon in the jar, but that's one. And I came down to the refrigerator this morning and this is number two. I'm so happy that I was able to get these pineapples on sale for $1.89, under $2. And so it's important for us to, for food security's sake and for healthier eating choices that we pay attention to, even if we can't grow things in our garden, like pay attention to when we have a good sale, I'll put this back in the refrigerator. Attention to when things are on sale, to farmer's market, like they would sell, I went to look for pineapple before I found this sale. I just literally ran into that sale at Walmart. I went in to get a couple of things and I walked in and boom, it was there waiting for me. And I wasn't looking at the moment because I have given up on looking for a sale because I wasn't going to pay $4 for one pineapple because that's what they're running at. And so I was able to grab these, but I'm just saying that to say that food preservation, food security is very important. And so we got to pay attention because there's a lot of mouths to feed. People might be looking on you for something like who knows what struggles people may have. If they have prepped, if they have prepped enough, like whatever the case is, I don't think you can ever prep enough. Believe it or not, I don't, I don't believe you can, especially for the people that don't really prep. I'm not a hardcore prepper, but I am ready and I'll be good for a minute. If anything was to go down, my family will be good for a good minute. The only thing I would worry about or be not worry, but be concerned about like mental status. You know what I mean? We just got to make sure that we could the number one key for survival, your mental status. And so I'm just here, you know, to encourage people, like no matter what's going on, just stay aware, be aware, stay woke, you know, and do what you do, do what you do. Not because you're forced to do it. You don't, that's why you have to stay aware. Don't be forced to do anything. Be aware. So that way you're not forced, be aware and stay ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So this is what I'm doing here. I enjoy it. I love being in the kitchen. I love being in the garden. I love eating off the land. You know, I just enjoy doing my own thing on my own time. And being able to prepare stuff for my family to enjoy. Just prepare food and show them, like, do my part and ensure them and encourage them that this is what's going on. This is what is happening. 
you know and we're pretty much on the same page <laughs> my husband and i we talk about this all the time and we're pretty much on the same page for everything you can think of going down like we're on the same page we may not be ready for certain things like a biological warfare but other than that like we're prepared for defense to be in defense mode and all of that stuff so I'm just here doing my work. It's nice and quiet. It's just me. And I'm just working with my hands and just my mind is just going. Like it's going places. It's thinking. It's it's showing me. It's just reminiscent of the facts of life today. The realities that that are possible and that we should not take time and people for granted. And so I just want to come on here. And then encourage everyone to live life. Live life to the fullest. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. As much as you can, be prepared for the unknown. When I say be prepared, get books. Educate yourselves on remedies, natural remedies, on herbs that you can use. And I'm not here giving anyone any professional advice. But at the same time, I just want you to do your own research. I'm not a professional here. You can take it upon yourself if you wish to and you know get yourself ready in some fo some form some capacity because remember if anything were to go down you have to be an asset you can't set up yourself to be baked because who knows what's gonna come who who knows what the situation is gonna be you have to have something to come to the table with you have to either have strength you have to either either have knowledge or the physical ability to and so everything comes into play when it comes to being a part of any given team and so you want to make sure you're ready you're ready and you're able to perform at the fullest capacity possible we just never know if when what we don't know but we got to be ready in some form or fashion so that if the opportunity comes for you to perform, you're able to do so. Or if the situation arises that there is a need for your expertise or for your knowledge or whatever it may be that you're ready to be a part of a team that you're going to be helpful to. Okay? This is no choke. Like anything can go down. Like if, if anyone were to be a part of my team, they have to come to the table with something. Because I'm not sitting over here preparing and, you know, just what if and thinking, oh, this one's going to run, come over here empty-handed, sitting there being all, no, no, no. Don't break my moral down over here like, mm-mm, I'm not babysitting you. Ain't no hospital over here, you know, ain't no COP to help. Ain't no 911 to call, so what are we going to do? What do you have to bring to the table? What are you going to be responsible for and take care of and make sure that that, that duty is carried out? Okay, plant a seed. Stop worrying about, oh, I live in an apartment and oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. What about what you can do? You can't plant, okay. But buy a couple of books, educate yourself as to what natural remedies that are be helpful in situations where you know it would be needed how about that get a couple books and and have it there like important books like canning like fermenting because we need we, if if something were to happen and nobody can go out we want to make sure we have all those things in play we want to make sure we have already knowledge because there's there ain't gonna be no internet there ain't gonna be no internet and all of that stuff that we allow ourselves to be so dependent on and so in the midst of whatever may or may not be going down who's going to be there to retain all that stuff in their head you know it's it's going to be a tough it's going to be tough and we don't want to be that shaky when and if that moment ever comes so we just want to stay ready and be prepared and be a valuable asset of any given team you want to make sure that you have something that you secure your spot on that team 
okay so this is just my little encouragement here for people out there you know to get ready to stay ready to do something in whatever form or fashion you see it fit because you just never know if i'm taking in anyone guess what i want to make sure you have some credentials you i, I gotta see i gotta see what you got i gotta know what you're capable of and guess what i'm gonna give you a trial run and let's hope after that trial run you don't end up having to run because that might just be what I would have to do for my family survival, for my family security and safety. And so, you know, I just want to see here, and I'm not mixing my words because none of us knows. And when I say prep, I'm not talking about prepping for the apocalypse or I'm not saying that. That's, that would be worst case scenario. That type of stuff is worst case scenario. scenario. And if in case something like that were to go down or a nuclear strike or whatever it is, clutch your Bible closer. Talk to your maker. Whoever your maker is. Whoever that higher power you serve is. Clutch that closer to you. In 2020, when that big thing happened, I don't even want to mention it, and it's not going to be a big part of my channel, but... When that thing happened in 2020, I was scared to go outside because there was so much different, you know, controversial and also um, misinformation about that thing that I was scared. I was, I wear sunglasses all the time to protect my eyes, but at the same time, I was covering my eyes. I was washing my fruits. I was the only one allowed to go outside beside my husband. The kids weren't allowed to go outside. They, I mean, they weren't, the boys weren't allowed to help me when I came home with the groceries. I had to, they would meet me in the mudroom with <laughs> two buckets, a bucket of soapy water and a bucket of clean water. I would have to change my clothes in the garage. I had a set, a station set up there with hand sanitizer and spray to spray me down because I didn't know what was going on and I was afraid that I would get my kids sick or somebody in here would get sick and so I took I took those drastic measures to protect my family I don't know what was going on you know and there was a lot of misinformation but I just wanted to make sure whether I believed in it or not I just wanted to make sure that my family was safe and that I was gonna do all I can to make sure that they stayed safe and so that those were the measures that we took we had rules. Anybody had sniffles for whatever reason, they were going to be quarantined. And we have areas and we have rooms that we can switch up and turn it into a quarantine room. And so that's what we planned and that's what we have to do. Because you have to plan for, for things, like in case anything were to happen. You have to, you have to have that hard conversation. You know, and so that's what we did. And going forward, like even before 2020... I was raising chickens. I was doing eggs and, and meat. And in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh. Now in my community, the pressure is probably going to be on me to make sure that my neighbors have food as far as eggs and my garden and all that stuff. Like, I, I thought about it. But it didn't, thankfully, it didn't come to that. But hopefully it's a wake-up call for a lot of people to start doing something and, you know, not just taking things for granted and think that, Oh, that thing in 2020 is over with now and there's vaccines for it and it's over and nothing worse can happen. I ran out of room. I ran out of room in my dehydrator. Don't just think that nothing big would happen again. Like you just never know. And you want to make sure you have all that covered. The people that were running out there for toilet paper, I don't know what the toilet paper craze was, but there's water. There's other things you can use. You know, like nobody has to see what you're using. That's private stuff. So I'm just saying this to say that we don't have to go with the trend 
we don't have to go with what's going on you hear oh they're getting all these toilet paper let's go stock up on toilet paper you no know, for what is it with the toilet paper i grew up in the caribbean when you use what you had to use i was part of that era and look at me i'm going to be 44 in a couple of weeks and look at me I'm, I'm alive and i'm okay i'm well so i can go back to that and i'll be just perfectly fine we make a big fuss over the simplest things and things that we have allowed ourselves to get so comfortable with and i mean we forget we trick our minds into thinking that okay this is how we are now and we're all flustered in a situation where we can't even think about the simplest thing to go back where we came from go back to nature and figure things out and make it work guys we need to talk to our minds our mind is such a strong thing that we need to get a hold of and sometimes we just let it take us over but we are in control and should be in control of our minds so it's not a rant it's just a reminder and it's just you know fruit line and it's just um encouraging people to do the best they can live peaceably as much as they can eliminate all the negative vibes and the negative energy and the negative people that you have in your life that you've been trying to keep up with and it's still not working out let it go and let it go for good so have a blessed day everyone and thanks again for watching i'll see you again right here next time on fifi's journey